What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Hope everybody's having a great day or night whenever you're watching this. LA Lakers fans, we can rejoice. The Russell Westbrook trade has finally happened, and thank God I could not take it any longer. But I thought the trade was awesome, for, honestly, for all parts. But I want to talk about the Lakers side. I'm a Laker fan. Most of you that have watched my channel for a while now know that. So I want to talk about how happy I am with this trade. And let's get into it, okay? Before I do, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please like the video. But let's discuss the trade. The LA Lakers received D'Angelo Russell, Jared Vanderbilt, and Malik Beasley. Three really, really excellent players. I'll talk about them in depth in a little bit. The other players involved in the trade, obviously, we need to get that out of the way. The Minnesota Timberwolves got some pretty good players. We got Mike Conley, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and like three second-round picks. Pretty good value right there. Second-round picks can be meaningful players down the line if you draft well. The Jazz get Russell Westbrook, who's probably going to be a buyout. They get the Lakers' uh, top four 2027 first-round, or top four protected 2027 first-round pick. And then they get Juan Toscano Anderson and Damian Jones. So I imagine most of those guys probably not playing too much. Russ probably getting bought out. Laker time. Let's talk about my Lakers. They're getting D'Angelo Russell. He's been an all-star in this league. He's averaging like, I think, 17 points and like six or seven assists per game. The important part here, though, 40% from three, 40% on catch and shoot threes. Obviously, if you're going to play next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis, you need to know how to shoot the damn ball. And they got a guy that can do that at a pretty elite clip, can create his own shot. I... He was one of my favorite players, especially when he got drafted by the Lakers. Really rode him all the way, and then he goes to the Nets. Blossoms becomes a great player. It's pretty solid for the Timberwolves, but obviously it kind of wasn't working out there towards the end because they had a different direction. They're going with Anthony Edwards, understandably so. And so you get D'Angelo Russell, who is an all-star level player. You get Malik Beasley, who's a career 38% three-point shooter, which is solid. I think he's like 36% this year. He's a little bit of a chucker. He shoots at like 40% overall from the field. But he's a guy that can come off the bench and give you a quick 10 to 12 points um, in any given night. So I think that that's something that they kind of lacked. They lacked some explosiveness off the bench. Like, they have decent players. Like, Lonnie Walker's cool. But, like, other than that, they don't really have those guys that can go out there and just get buckets. And he's one of those guys that's nice to have. Then we get my, honestly, almost my favorite part of the trade, Jared Vanderbilt. So underrated. Love this guy's defense. The versatility. Can guard one through five. And they did not, other than Anthony Davis, they didn't have a guy on this roster that could do that. LeBron James, you should not be asking him to do that. He's too old for that. Jared Vanderbilt, one of the best perimeter interior. You can kind of defend everywhere. Really good screening. Uh, awesome on the hustle plays, rebounding, dunks. Like he's going to be in that dunker spot. And he's just a good player. I've, I've loved Vanderbilt. So to get him on the team, cannot wait to watch him play every single night. Obviously the most important part of this trade is the fit on paper is way better than what it was with Russ. And Russ is one of my favorite players of all time. But just keep it real, the fit did not work. It was bad. That There's too many times where LeBron or AD or anybody else would kick out to him and the defense would literally just stand there in the paint like, go ahead, shoot it. We're not scared. And it sucked watching because it's like, I'd rather you just shoot it. Getting, you know, Beasley and D'Angelo, those guys are going to let that fly every time. So you have to respect it, which pulls guys out of the paint, which gives guys like AD and LeBron more space, creates a better fitting offense on paper. And looking at it, the depth on the Lakers now is way better because of the depth and fit. Those are the two biggest things that they addressed here. Because now your, your team, what does it look like? You have D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. Uh, you got Rui Hachimura. You got Patrick Beverly, Dennis Schroeder. Max Christie, Austin Reeves, Laker Faithful loves that guy, Lonnie Walker. Uh, they're almost like 11 or 12 deep now. And it's been a long, long time since I've watched the Lakers be 11 or 12 deep. And these are guys that can all, like, they can play. Troy Brown Jr., you know, like, they got guys that can go out there and play. And that is something that they just really were lacking. And I'm really excited to watch this prosper on the court. Obviously, the biggest thing that is going to determine how well this goes is health. Because as anybody that's watched the Lakers over the past few years now, health has been the one thing that has absolutely destroyed their seasons. So they got to be healthy. That's going to be the biggest thing. Uh, if they're not healthy, it's kind of all for nothing. But another thing in this trade is they kept the 2029 first round pick. So they still have, and you know, they still have Patrick Beverly. So if they wanted to use him as a filler to try and get somebody else, they can go down that avenue now. Like they have more flexibility to get even better if it if the window opens up. Obviously, it takes two to tango. You need the other team to be willing to trade. 
I know the Bojan Bogdanovic stuff. We'll see if they're able to make anything happen with that. But they also, you know, with the 2027 pick, it's top four protected. So if they're just absolutely terrible, you know, four years from now, which could be very possible because LeBron will probably be retired. And, you know, you don't know what the team's going to look like by then. Having to be top four protected might be pretty good. That might be really, really important four years down the line. Honestly, getting any sort of protection was surprising to me, but I'll take it. Now, obviously, one thing that comes along with a lot of depth is you need the coach that know to put the pieces in the right part of the puzzle so it works together. Rotations have been something that have been really, really rough to watch as a Laker fan with Darvin Ham as coach. Part of it, I you, know, you give him a little bit of a, a pass because it's like, okay, we don't really have any wings. We don't really have... Uh, you know, X amount of guys. We just didn't have the talent and the depth to do it. Now you can kind of got, you can kind of, you know, mix and match and you can have lineups out there that are, you know, all five guys can shoot. You can have all five guys that can lock down now. So I think that versatility that, you know, you really got it when you got Vanderbilt and D'Angelo who do completely different things, but are pretty good in both those aspects. So obviously we're going to have to see how this plays out to determine how good this would be. On paper, I think that they can compete now. Before this, I didn't even think we were a play-in team. I I was like, nah, we're not getting to the plan. The fit is just too bad. Like this, It just doesn't work. But now I think that they can definitely get out of the play-in. And then in the playoffs, you don't want to be the team that's got to play LeBron James and Anthony Davis if they're healthy. And if they have a team around them that is at least built to... It is at least built to do something. Because what we were built to do before was run into the ground. So... I cannot wait. I can't wait. Laker fans, how do you feel about the trade? I I wish Russ the best in his future. He's probably going to get bought out. Maybe. I don't know if any contenders are even really going to be looking at him. I think a team, he should be looking to go to a team that doesn't have like expectations, aspirations, and just kind of figure himself out because he's a fun player. He's a good person, and I, I wish him nothing but the best. On paper, this is going to be really fun. This will be really fun. I cannot wait to tune into the next game. I honest, I'm going to be honest. The game against the Thunder, that were where LeBron broke the record for points, that was the only game this season that I've looked forward to. To like, I want to see how this goes, you know? Because I just knew we were not doing anything before this trade. Now I'm, you know, I think it's a shot in the arm. It's something that this team desperately needed. And I feel like that, that can be something that turns it around. You know, they're going into the All-Star break now. So you get a few games to mesh and then you get the break to kind of figure things out, iron out what you want to do in the, the last 20 games of the season. And then, you know, they just got to get into the play-in because I, I don't know if they're a top six team by the end of the season. It's possible. It's very possible. But I think the first goal, we got to get into the playoff picture because, you know, like 13 seed right now. Let me know, where do you think the Lakers will finish this season? Do you think that they are, do you think that they're a playoff team? Do you think they're a contender? Do you think they still miss the playoffs? What is your honest opinion on it? I personally think that they can compete in the playoffs. I don't know if they're necessarily a contender. That is yet to be seen because we have not seen this team mesh yet. And it's all, you know, just we're just guessing right now. But I can't wait to watch it. I cannot wait to see how this pans out because I'm really optimistic. And I have not been optimistic about my Lakers in two years now. So fun place to be finally. But let me know how you're feeling about the Lakers, where you think they finish, um, what you think of the trade particularly, because I think all three teams kind of got things that uh, might help them in the future, uh, whether it's, you know, the cap space opening up or the embracing the rebuild or... You know, the two rules getting Mike Conley, which would be a pretty good fit in my opinion. And then obviously I talk about the Lakers. So let me know what you think about this trade. This is a blockbuster in my opinion. But the Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, Anthony Davis era is finally over. Thank you, God. Thanks for watching. I'm done here. Peace.